today I have the Logic Cube Forensic Phantom. This device, I believe, can do several functions. It can clone drives, it can wipe them, hence the zero button, and apparently it does some form of testing. I don't know if that's an internal test or not. Although this thing does power on, you can hear the fan come on. There's an internal hard drive in this. Uh, it says it's a uh, version one, and eventually it either faults out and says internal error, or sometimes it says it can't detect the hard drive. So I'm not really sure what the issue is. I think it's, yeah, there's the fault. Now it's saying hard drive not present. It obviously can use serial ATA or parallel ATA. I do have a uh, power connect cable for this and I tried hooking up drives to this and it doesn't really do anything. The side of the unit has a standard barrel connector and a USB port. This does register as a mass storage device when plugged into my standard Windows PC. However, nothing actually shows up. So I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it needs to be able to detect one of these for it to show up or it needs special software. Not sure. Uh, there's a little fan and you got a serial port. On the bottom, there's just a little bit of information, the Forensic Phantom, blah, blah. As a company, I hate Logic Cube. There's so little information on their stuff, it's so annoying. You go to their website, and they have like their newest product, and that's it. And there's even the newest product has barely any information. Oh look, we can uh, do forensic analysis, and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't actually tell you anything about it. There's no specs or anything. So it's very annoying. They're, they seem to be one of those old school companies that want you to talk to one of their sales reps and that kind of crap. And, you know, I just want software. I just want firmware, but they never have any of that stuff. And I can't be bothered to call them up and, or um, email them and get that data. Cause usually, uh, or software, usually it's not that important or interesting. A lot of these devices are pretty limited because even though they do cool stuff like zeroing drives, which I often find useful since I resell a lot of drives from the stuff I buy on eBay, they usually have like big limitations. Like they only work with uh, older drives or smaller drives. It's usually the biggest problem. Like, you know, anything over a, ter a couple terabytes and it stops working, which makes it pretty useless. So it's a all metal case and it splits into two. And you can see that there is Standard parallel ATA hard drive. It's a Mac store 40 gig and a board with an FPGA and a couple Atmel chips on it. We'll take a look at and then you have the board on the top which has the display and handles all the power. Underneath the hard drive there's a little note that it must always be set to slave. With all the boards out all that's left is the serial port cable and a teeny tiny 30 millimeter fan that is quite loud as most 30 millimeter fans are. This consists of two boards and this one has a single Atmel AT91R4008 microcontroller, which is an ARM based microcontroller. A Little bit of flash memory, space for jumpers that look like they're for a hard drive, a parallel ATA hard drive, which is odd. This thing must identify as a drive when it's interfaced with the computer or second drive plugs in here and uh, drive plugs in here, which is kind of an odd way of writing it. Uh, this connector goes off to the upper board and this one is just an RS-232 port and ICE, probably the programming interface. And there's a couple RS-232 ports here voltage regulator, and not much else on this thing. Uh, the, the FPGA is a Xilinx Spartan XC2 S200E, which is a mid-range, kind of lower end one. This thing is most likely just simulating the parallel ATA commands and just either issuing them to drives or getting in the way, because often what these things do is they offer write blocking, which is very important for forensic work where they need to ensure that nothing has been written to a drive. So they can say in a court of law that nothing's been altered on the drive when they're using a hard drive as evidence. They often have write blocking functionality. So this will intercept it and stop it. But uh, I'm not 100% sure if this one does that. Copyright 2003 X late. Weird, never heard of them. I guess they outsource this thing. 
This upper board is fairly simple aside from all the parallel ATA connections and the connections down to the motherboard along with a couple serial ATA connections. It's basically just a Cypress USB controller with a whole bunch of resistor packs for presumably protection and the USB port. And then moving along, we've got a little display and a Marvell serial ATA controller. I think this is probably just a converter from parallel ATA to serial ATA. A couple big fuses for the power output, some push buttons, LCD, which is just resting on some foam on this little bodge under there and some LEDs for status, voltage regulator. This is a little switch that switches between parallel ATA and serial ATA. Uh, a few more bodges. This board has a lot more bodges than the other one. The other one just had the one by the oscillator. This one has a whole bunch of them, especially uh, there's a big one on the back here. Looks like it's either like a voltage regulator or maybe some kind of filter. Either way, that's a, <laughs> that's a five pin device I had to attach on. The womb board is what was interfacing to this. So I guess that's the womb board, good to know. This one's copyright 2004 by Logic Cube. Revision C, and they have this many bodges on it. Okie dokie. And a fan connector, standard Molex power connector. On the back, there's a single variable resistor that'll control the contrast for the LCD. Also, I notice under here, there's a chip by Parallax, which I've don't think I've ever seen on a product before. I mean, I've heard of the company, but I've never actually seen it used in anything. This is a configurable communication controller with flash memory and on-chip debug and other fancy things. Apparently it runs up to 75 megahertz. Oh, it's got a little clock crystal there. What, what, what's that, 30? Yeah, running at 30 megahertz, so no slouch. More power supply stuff. Whoa. Fancy coil craft inductor. Here's they had to modify this connector to get it to physically fit inside the case because they gnawed off the little clips. Oh, right, because this is actually against the case. So yeah, they, the, the clips on this thing stuck out and they would have uh, interfered with closing the case. It's weird they didn't just order a basic one with no uh, attachment clips, but okay. Whatever works. There's a couple jumpers there. Not sure what these ones do. Yeah, so there's not much in this thing. Uh, most of these these forensic type copying devices all pretty much use the same design. They're usually an FPGA that gets into in the way of a hard drive to block writes and it still handles all the calls and, and relays them back to the PC so that it like acknowledges the writes even though it's not physically writing to the drive. In this case it's you know it's gonna be doing the, the output of uh, zeroing the drive and that sort of thing, most likely through all through the FPGA.